Hello Southport friends, uh, it's wonderful to be with you this morning coming to you from my office at the bottom of the garden just a little warning my neighbour's been going nuts with the strimmer all afternoon and I'm hoping he's finished now but if you hear a buzzing that's what it is. What a what a joy to be able to open the word of God together and uh, I've got a word for you from the Lord and uh, with all due respect to Bacharach and David I believe that this is the word of the Lord to you this morning and that is what the world needs now is you, you, you. What the world needs now is you, you, you. Uh, We live in um, unusual times, unprecedented times. We live in times of great opportunity. We're living right now in a season where where we hope we're about to emerge from one way of living into a, a different way of living, but so much will have changed and the world is in such a different place to when we went into this pandemic and the people that you meet every day many of them are in in a in a place that they they really have no way of navigating no way of knowing how to move forward i think you know even us as believers we we don't know all that is going to happen or how we're going to respond to uh to life post pandemic Uh, But we have uh, the Spirit of God with us. We have our hope in Jesus Christ. And there's a world around us that doesn't have that. There's a world around us that really doesn't know uh, what's going on or where they're going to go. And it's at times like this that the world needs God's people uh, like never before. I want to read you some verses from Psalm 84. It says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, Uh, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways of Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, They make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. And did you see what happened there? It started and ended that passage in the presence of God. How lovely is your dwelling place? And then coming back to appearing before God. But in between, there's a journey that passes through the valley of Baca or the valley of weeping. And that for us is a picture of this world, that you and I, our home and our our place of security and our place of belonging is in the presence of God. And our lives are framed from a journey from the presence where we enjoy, where we can boldly come before the throne, where we enjoy fellowship with the Father, ultimately to an eternity in the presence of God. But between those and between every journey we take in and out of the presence, even maybe the way you frame your day by spending time with the Lord in the morning and time with the Lord in the evening. In between, there is there are troubled places. There are places Uh, that not are there to cause us trouble because we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil because he's with us, but a place that really describes the world that we live in. And it also describes our mission field. And um, some translations here uh, talk about those who's in the hearts of the highways design and others say blessed are those who have um, set their hearts on pilgrimage. And that's what it means to be a pilgrim. It means that the highways of Zion are in your heart and it means that everywhere you go, because you come from the presence of God and you return to the presence of God, you can bring the qualities of Zion. You can bring the qualities of the presence of God. You bring the transforming kingdom of God into the world around you. And what the world needs now is men and women, boys and girls who are pilgrims, who have the highway to Zion in their heart, who are going to come and bring the presence of God into the world, into the darkest places, into the most troubled places, into the lives that have been, you know, just left devastated by recent experience or or left devastated by a a lifetime of, of not knowing Jesus. That's what we're called to do. And I want to show you two things that it says that happens in the Valley of Baca, in the Valley of Trouble. It says as they pass through it, as you and I pass through this valley, we make it a place of springs. And the autumn rain also covers it with pools. You see, there are two things going on here. There are springs coming up and there's rain coming down. And I want to look at those two things and just encourage us how we can 
partner with with the Holy Spirit, how we can cooperate with God, how we can be live in the calling that we have to be pilgrims in this world who bring the transforming presence of God to the troubled places of this world. The first thing to say is that pilgrims like you and me, we are wells of life. We are wells of life. Let me read you a few scriptures and wherever we go, we turn those places. There are pools. Why? Because there's water that's been coming out of us and overflowing and we leave the place wet. I'm going to read you the whole of Psalm 87 just because then it kind of really explains itself and gives you its context. It says this, he has founded his city on the holy mountain. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the other dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too and Tyre along with Cush, and will say this one was born in Zion. Indeed of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her. And the Most High himself will establish her. The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. And they, as they make music, they sing, all my fountains or all my springs are in you. It's a wonderful psalm looking forward to the day that we live in, looking forward to the era of the church where we were born like all these places that are listed here, Philistia, Babylon, Rahab, Cush. We were born as enemies of God. Those were Israel's enemies. You and I were naturally speaking, we were born as enemies of God. But God says of us now because of the amazing work of Jesus, no, it's not that you're not my enemies anymore. I'm going to say you were born in Zion. He, he tells her, he, he tells her a, naturally speaking, an untruth. Can God do that? But spiritually, it's true. You were born again in Zion. And that's the only identity that matters for you anymore. And now the source of my springs, the source of my life, anything that I might need to draw on to live this life are all found in Jesus. They're all found in this in this river of life. And Jesus himself, he talks about this river of life, doesn't he? In John 4, 14, he says to the woman at the well, whoever drinks of the water that I give them will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And then just shortly after that, in John 7, it says on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of them will flow rivers of living water. And by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up until that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And, you know, when it says here, Jesus says, you know, as the scripture has said, you might think he's quoting a specific Old Testament passage, but, you know, he's not. He's actually not saying what the scripture, small s, as in the Bible reference says. He's saying what the scripture, capital S, as in the entirety of the word of God says. And he's drawing on images like this one in Psalm 87 to speak of a time when there are a people in this world who exhibit a continual flow of of the living waters of God, not just within them for themselves so that they never thirst, but also out of them to turn the world around them into a well-watered place, a place in covered in pools. And as you and I as pilgrims, as we live our lives in, in pursuit of the purpose of God, we find that we, we bring this watering, this water of life effect, this river of God, this, this flow of the Spirit. Jesus, you know, John tells us, Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit. The world, this valley, this place of weeping, um, the valley of the shadow of death, it's called in Psalm 23. And, and that has been so true in so many ways over uh, the last year and a bit. That This place is our calling. This is where God wants us to be. That this is this is why the day that you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you weren't just kind of translated to heaven to enjoy his presence forever. God has a purpose for us in, for us in this world, and it is to bring his transforming presence, this living water. And uh, wherever we go, we can bring this living water but out of the principle that Jesus said, you know, um, freely you've received, freely give. It's like Peter and, and John at the beautiful gate where they... 
uh, they, you know, they say, we haven't got any silver or gold, but what we have, we give you. You know, that's a great phrase. Take that phrase on your lip, you, lips. Use that phrase when you're speaking to people. Say, what I have, I give you. I'm not, I'm not just kind of asking kind of vaguely that God might do something. I say, I've got something for you. I've got life for you. What I have, this living water, because all of my springs are in God, because I've been born again into Zion, because I have a new heritage, I have a new source of life, what I have, I give you. And out of me flow rivers of living water. How about, how about taking that and making that confession over yourself as you leave the house next time you go out? Out of me flow liver, rivers, not livers, not liver. You don't want your liver flowing out. Out of me flow rivers of living water. It wasn't supposed to be a tongue twister. Out of me flow rivers of living water. And you know, one of the prayers I've prayed a lot recently um, as I've gone and to meet with people, and particularly if they're facing a difficult time or a challenge or whatever, and or they need to make a decision or they need, they need comforting. Um, I've been reminded of when Jesus says some pretty unpleasant things. He says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part in me. And everyone leaves apart from the 12 disciples. And he says to them, are you going to leave as well? And they go, well, where would we go? Because you have the words of eternal life. And um, that's a prayer I've prayed a lot lately. I've just, when I've gone into a situation, I've said, or I've gone to meet with someone, I've said, Lord, give me words of life. Give me words of life. Let the things I say bring your life into this person's life, into this person's situation. Now, the second thing that we read in that passage in Psalm 84, that the pilgrims make it a place of, um, of pools and of springs, but it also then says, and the early rains also cover it with pools. The early rains. Now, the early rains um, were the, the rains that came at the beginning of the uh, agricultural cycle. And the early rains were needed because in the uh, climate of, of the Middle East, you have a long, dry summer. And at the end of that time, you've had your harvest. It's ripened. You've taken in the harvest. And now... Uh, what was kind of fertile soil is more like concrete. It's baked dry. There's not a drop of moisture in it. So before you can even sow a seed, you can't even get it in the ground until the early rains have come and softened it. And Psalm 84 is saying that you and I, just by our presence in the valley of the world, we provoke the early rains to come. Isn't that amazing? We are rainmakers. We provoke heaven to send specifically here the early rains. And what that would have done in ancient Israel, and presumably it's still the same today, is around October, November, these rains would come. They would soften the ground, then the crops would be sown, then the rains continue until you get the latter rains in kind of March time. The crops are fully grown and then it ripens. So you have the early rains and the latter rains. But for here, in the latter rain... Um, is you know is 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 uh, is something of great you know it's the rain that says the harvest is nearly here. But the earth, without the early rain, you can't have the latter rain. Without the ground having been softened, you can't sow the seed. And our journey through this world means that the places we go and the people we meet experience the early rains of God that come and soften their lives, soften their hearts, to receive the good seed of the gospel. You and I are rainmakers and we provoke the rain to come to heaven. Why? So that we can sow the seed of the word. And um, I, I want to encourage you to know that, you know, sometimes, you know, the parable of the sower, the sower goes out to sow. We sow in every season, we sow in every opportunity. But just by our very presence in the troubled places of this world, we are softening the ground. The water of God, the living water is coming and falling in order that the seed that we sow is being effective. It can take root, it can germinate, it can grow, and it can come and bear a harvest. Now, when I was a kid, um, I had a kind of a practical lesson in this because my mum and my dad, many of you know my mum, knew my mum and dad, and they had a particular anointing when it came to family holidays. They could, without fail, always select a time and a place to take us on holiday where it would rain the whole time. Wherever they went, it rained. And you know what? That was 
super frustrating as a kid. Um, I, you know, I actually kind of, it was, I was before, I, I was an adult before I realised that you could actually go on holiday where it was warm and sunny, that that was actually a thing. Um, but looking back, it taught me something that in the natural, first the natural, then the spiritual, eh? um, in the natural, they had an ability to, to sniff out bad weather. They had an ability to zero in on where the rain was coming. Or maybe it was even more than that. Maybe it was just that wherever they went, God sent the rain. <laughs> well, I doubt that was true in the natural, but it is true in the spiritual that wherever you go, God is going to send the rain. Your presence and your attitude as a pilgrim in this world, being here on the mission of God, journeying from the presence and to the presence, being an answer to the problems of this world, being a source of life to the world around you. God sends the rain. You know, what the world needs now is you, you, you. There are lots of broken, weary, tired and thirsty people. I believe there's a lot of hard hearts in the world at the moment. Often when we think of hard heartedness, we think of of kind of bitterness or, or kind of opposition. Um, but I just sense there's a hard heartedness at the moment that's that's a form of resilience of how people have been dealing with a pandemic and dealing with lockdown. And the way to deal with lockdown for many has been to lock down, to kind of in their own thinking, to stop maybe feeling, to lower their expectations, to and you know, there's a hardness that is not due to a bad attitude, but is due to a season, just like it was true for the for the ground at the end of the long, hot summer in the Middle East. It, you know, there, there, there was nothing wrong with the ground. It was the season that the ground had been through. And as soon as the rain came, the softness returned and the seed could go in. You are a well of life to people like that. You are a rainmaker. You're provoking the rain of heaven to come and to soften those hearts. That's really what I want to share with you. And uh, I'm just going to round off by by praying for you and praying this anointing that we read in Psalm 84, this anointing that Jesus promised in John 4 and John 7 on each one of us as we go out into a troubled and, uh, and, and, and um, dry world. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for my friends uh, in Southport, I want to thank you, Lord, for their hearts that are towards you. Lord, I want to thank you that they know you as their sustainer and the one who continually bubbles up within them to eternal life. And Lord, I pray a fresh anointing on them as they go out into a world as we find more opportunity and more doors open and less restrictions on our physical interactions. Lord, I pray, Lord, that there is a fresh anointing upon them a fresh anointing to be that well of life to the world around them, a fresh anointing, Lord, to provoke heaven and for your rain to come and to soften the earth, that the seed they sow, the words they speak, the words of life they bring will quickly bear fruit. And Lord, that you will transform our environment. You will transform the valley of this world into a place of your presence, Lord, that your kingdom would come through words, through deeds, through prayers, through healing, through, uh, Lord, through the gospel being shared and, and being received and, and bearing fruit. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let us know your anointing. Let us know your compassion. Let us know your boldness. Let, no, boldness. let us not fear uh, because you are with us. And let us bring your life to this dry and weary place, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again as soon as possible.